fractions here. Can we get common denominators and add fractions? Can we find a common denominator? We found common denominators with x plus 1 and x minus 1. Can we find common denominators here? Well, look at the denominators. What do they have in common? It's just the product of them. The least common denominator here would be cosecant squared of x times secant squared of x. So all you'd have to do to get common denominators would just be multiplied by cosecant squared of x times cosecant squared of x, secant squared of x times secant squared of x. And then you could do that, and you can multiply, and you can get common denominators. However, I did that. So I'm going to save you some trouble. I did that, and you can continue working on it. It's not a problem. I'm sure you're going to get to the same answer I am. But what I realized was, you know what? Before I actually combine fractions, one thing that we learn in algebra is, before we start doing a lot of stuff, is to always look to simplify something first, right? Yes? So what I decided to do on this problem was, you know what? What if maybe something might simplify out here first? Before I combine fractions, let me simplify this, or let me see what they are. So what I did is I decided to write everything in terms of sines and cosines. And you might say it doesn't look any, any cleaner. But I just want to kind of see what everything looks like when I do this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to get these fractions off the denominator by multiplying by the reciprocal. That's important because all those go down. Now, a couple things happen here. What's cool about what actually, um, hold on, there was that. So when I multiply this out, I now get sine cubed over cosine of x plus here, my cosines divide out, I'm getting sine of x times cosine of x. And you could always put that over 1. I think it's always helpful to put things over 1 so you just don't forget they are fractions. All right. Wait, yes. Can you go straight to like the left side by the reciprocal? From up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just didn't do it that way. So if you did it that way, if you want to see where your answer is, that's perfectly fine. I just I decided to do it a different way. I don't know if it's better. It could be faster. It could be slower. I don't know. I just figured it was worth a shot. Yes. Can you wait till I'm done? Because I thought you'd want to be writing this down until I was done, right? Um, interesting. All right. So if I, what's the what's the common denominator of cosine and one? It's much easier to do with this one. It's just gonna be cosine. So I'll multiply by cosine of x over cosine of x, and now I obtain sine cubed plus sine of x cosine squared of x all over cosine of x. <sighs> now, it might not seem too much to you guys and be like, well, this still doesn't look that better. But can I factor anything out in the numerator? Close. What do these two terms share? Sine. So if you factor out a sine of x, you get sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x all over cosine of x. Yes? Huh? It's always of x. Always. Or of theta. Or of y. There is no such thing as y sine or cosine. It's always of an angle. Yes? So you would make it sine of squared x would be sine squared of x. Talking about here? Yeah. You mean why you can't combine those? Yeah, because this is attached to that. So that's like saying 4 plus 4x is 5, or 5x, right? That does. So since that's multiplied by cosine, you can't combine them. Guys, what's sine squared plus cosine squared? 1. It's in your identities. And then what's sine divided by cosine? Tangent. So the final answer is tangent. Over 
like some it's some time that for some of us it is too close to the bus and then I leave and how common along with it. And then they just like Yeah, and then it won't be But I mess up my own things and stuff like that. Um if you were to get common denominator as cosecant secant, so basically you're gonna have secant which is one over cosine times sine over cosine plus sine over cosine times one over sine all over one over um, one over sine times one over cosine. No, that's getting common denominators. But I thought Oh, oh, yeah. And then you can multiply by the reciprocal, which would multiply out. And then sine squared and cosine. Hmm. No, I, I don't. I mean, I'd I'd work at. I just don't have time for right now. But I can look at it. You can definitely. There's nothing wrong with doing it different ways. Um, all right. But I just got to move on because I want to go through. Unfortunately, I I'm just gonna have to teach for the last half an hour. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is write down steps to verifying trig and trig identities. The good thing about today. Should I erase it all before you have time to write it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have more examples. The good thing what we're learning today is everything you guys learned last class period, we're doing again today. Why is that a good thing? Because <laughs> you're not learning anything new. But I didn't understand it last class. Didn't what didn't you understand? Maybe you can learn it now. So did you come after school asking ask some questions? Nope. Can you come after school and ask some questions? Nope. <laughs> can you come in and ask one question for five seconds? Yep, can you write down questions when you're at home doing your homework and submit them to me? Yep. Yeah, like yes, now would be a perfect time. Can you email me some questions that you may have? Yeah. I do. I mean, I'm not going to answer too many questions over email, but I would mostly my biggest response would be just come and see me. That's, no, your quiz is only simplifying, verifying, and solving. Well, do you have like a quiz on Pythagorean? Nope, only Pythagorean. Only Pythagorean. They're not that hard. Whenever you see. Only double AYD. You're right. Double AYD with triangle. Yeah, all the rest of those are fine. Whenever you see this, mm -hmm. whenever you see that pi half minus theta, mm -hmm. just know you have to use your cofunction identities. Sine is always just cosine. Cotans is always just tangent. Secant is oh. always just cosecant. So. Okay. That's a better way to think of it. I just saw a lot of numbers in there. Yeah, it looks very confusing. Yeah. But I mean, you need to know Basically all, of them. all of them. The only, th I mean, the only thing you don't need to know are all these. And Pythagorean identities is always provided to you. All right. Oh. Well, obviously, the only thing we've covered is quotient, quotient reciprocal, Pythagorean, even odd, and cofunction. Anything else you definitely yeah, don't need to know. Pythagorean is the only one that's provided. Yeah, but we haven't learned that yet, so that's for later. All right. Tan of x, secant of x, sine of x. So, um, ooh, 